welcome back. We have an exciting week ahead of us. Yeah, so if you've seen our last video, you've seen we got the 65 uh, cab over, stub nose, whatever you want to call it, running and driving for Hannah. We came up with a few issues, uh, such as third gear, which we think we got that nailed down. We got our air compressor, the airline, or the air pressure fixed. And now we're moving on to taking the, taking the bed off its original chassis, and we're going to try to stick it on her truck and move the axle forward. So I'm excited. I really have a lot of work to do cleaning this thing out. Um, I did start on it a while back just cleaning drawers out, but there's still some on the other side that are full. I think every toolbox, every little ammo box is full. So um, there's a lot of work to be done yet, but it's a beautiful day, a beautiful week. So I think we're gonna get a lot done. Yeah, so first things first is I went ahead and took a torch and cut everything holding this bed to the frame. Uh, Robert really went to town by securing this bed to the frame so I don't want to bore you guys with me just doing a bunch of cutting and torching and um, bolting so without us rambling on let's go ahead and gut the center of this bed let's try to pull off all the weight we can we got our gantry here we got our chain lifts um, ready to pull this bed off and we're gonna give the forklift a, a workout yeah money. so let's get on it that little compartment is full it is still full yeah. I right. thought you ain't got into it. No, that. I ain't had a chance. This is the only thing I've got done without you saying, hey, can you help me? And then I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah. So, uh, come this way. All of these are extremely full. I can't even get some of them open. Yeah, it's all these little ammo boxes are full of, like, inch bolts or inch nuts, 5 eighths. I mean, he's got it loaded down. Uh, kind of the game plan. I think we're leaving the side cabinets, but the center section all comes out so we can pull our gooseneck trailer. And we're going to have probably that one will probably be all right, but it's going to be pushing it. And yeah. we're going to leave the shelves out of it because we'll probably cut this section here out and that'll allow us to put our floor jack or some uh, bigger tools with the, the cabinets in it kind of really limited of what you put in there also luggage. You got to think of where's your luggage going to go because yeah, it ain't going in the cab of this thing. It's probably got. I don't know how, I wish I had a way we could weigh all this, but look at all the chains. It's got all kinds of chains and stuff in there. There's a lot going on. Cause it could be missed. Oh my God. We're trying to take stuff off the truck and you're yeah, putting stuff on. this is going to be. That's for a water cooler. No, it's for a can. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is. What if I want a nice drink of water and then I got I mean, that. we can put a cooler in this, make it look cool, and you can drink it. You ought to have, you ought to find an old water cooler thing, and then have Paul pinstrap it up for you. Oh, I could just have him pinstrap me up a can again. <laughs> We finally got the ammo boxes off there, I guess. I say finally like it took us forever. But open that thing up. Yeah. This, Let's see what's in it. I tell you what. This one, I don't know why. You can't even open this. Yeah. All right. Look at all this stuff. I got poop on my shoes or I got persimmon? That's what's going persimmon. On it's definitely persimmon. <laughs> Golly. The bed ain't going to weigh nothing when we get this cleared out. Keep that pinnel hitch on it. Can I buy it from you? Guess you can. That's what I'll pay you. <laughs> pinnel hitch. Yeah. For all this work we've done on your truck, uh -huh. I get paid a pinnel hitch. Yeah, seems fair. Majority of the way cleared. It already looks a hundred times different. Look at all this stuff that we've got out of it. I mean, a lot of that, like we said, is going to go back in like the tanks. I mean, those are pretty cool in the chains. Uh, but for now, we need somewhere to put it other than the yard because yes. I've done destroyed the yard. Yeah. So um, we're clearing it out. Next, we have 
the air compressor, but it is gonna be raised up so we can get it off here and then see what else we're working with. Yeah, and we took those uh, two by two angles down that supported the second headache rack to the back here. They were fastened here and went all the way to here. Uh, we took them out because those are going to hit the gooseneck, so we went ahead and pulled well, them. Well, and I couldn't get this toolbox um, off without it. I didn't know how that toolbox was in there, whether it was welded down. I wasn't sure. What was it? Was it just stuck no, in there? No, I can pick it up. I mean, it's heavy, heavy, but... Hannah said Robert must have been jacked. I would have liked to see. I bet he was a big old buff guy. There ain't nothing light on this thing. I mean, paper, but anything else on here... You got to have muscles to get. I mean. And you got them, babe. Look at them oh babies. Oh, man. Ask Daniil, okay? You ask Daniil. Yeah. You were arm wrestling her yeah. or something? <laughs> she said I was a tank. All right. Let's pull that thing out. Oh, you're pulling that out. So we're hung up right here and it, the forklift's trying to pick up the whole entire truck. Um, we've got the front of the bed free. The old forklift's stout. Yeah, she is a stout one here. Now don't be where if it falls, it'll get you. Okay. All right, I feel like a million years later, we're ready to pull this off. We had a little hang up. Uh, the hitch, once we get it up, I'll be able to show you, but the hitch is incorporated with the cross member. So I cut the cross member, well the cross member, where I cut it, I cut it at an angle so it's hanging up on it. So we got our one ton Harbor Freight chain lifts hanging the holding the front up and our $800 1968 <laughs> Uh, forklift picking up the back. This baby is heavy. So I guess let's try it. take everything off that we need mm -hmm. and then we're done with this chassis but we need our gas tank straps yet but as you can see here that is the cross member to the truck well actually right here you can see it so this is the frame rail this is what we were hung up on it was hitting here I, I cut the cross member out because he had it bolted on what i'll do now is just clean that up set it into that truck and we'll we'll um attach some metal to it or take those bolts out. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. We, we want to get it uh, secured and stuff before we get underneath oh, this God. thing. Cause if one of those chains snap, mm -hmm. it's game over. This is a heavy duty bed. It should set right back on the truck. The only thing is it's probably going to be three inches higher than it normally was because we lowered the cab down three inches. 
So the bed will be up three inches higher. Uh, the only way we could maybe, we might, we might be able to take these runners here off. That would get us down to two inches. And that would, you know, an inch ain't going to make or break it. So we might pull these off, but we want to get it secured first before we go any further. So I like the original fuel tanks better. And it kind of needs to work out that way anyways, because there's going to be, the bed is probably going to be sitting right here. But not only that, there's, that's a big, is that what them people do with the squatted trucks? Yeah. Yeah. But that is a pretty big gap, and uh, I think the other fuel tanks will kind of minimize that. If not, then we'll have to put a plate. But the other fuel tanks, I just like the way they look a little better. They're just beefier. The battery tray is here, of course, and we're going to take the original fuel tank and cut it out and slide it over that so it you don't have to move the batteries. So I went ahead and removed the battery tray or the battery cover and the fuel tank off the original international frame. And what we're going to be doing now is taking the 1965 Ford fuel tank. That's what you're seeing behind me. We're filling it with water. Yeah. So we're filling it with water because the plan is we're going to cut the back of it out and then slide it over top of the, the battery. So it's going to look like it's a fuel tank, but really it's just going to be housing the batteries. Um, I think I've been all right just to cut it, but Hannah said that I needed to fill it up with water and be safe. Mm -hmm. And you guys are probably agreeing with her. We're waiting for this tank to fill up. And then, like I said, we're just gonna cut the back out and slide it past. Hopefully it works and I guess we'll find out. can't go any closer to the frame rail because it's hitting the leaf spring shackle and she wants it up a little bit more we can go up an inch more without cutting the bottom of the fuel tank we can take a, there's a piece of inch by inch angle iron on the bottom side of the batteries we can remove that and go up an inch but we think we're kind of in agreement that it's going to look better if we go up another three to four inches so in order to do that like i said we just got to cut the bottom of the tank out just a section of it and it'll slide on past we just got to kind of watch what we do on this side because the other side we can't cut nothing out of. But that being said, there's nothing on the other side to hold us from going further up. Like this side, the battery tray is holding us from going up. So once we get this side established, we'll be able to, um, you know, mirror image to the other side. This is the gap we have now. So it's not horrible. It's way better than what it was, but it's still, I mean, you can see through the truck so i would just like it to be a little little closer a little closer yeah that ain't a big deal and this is what i was talking about the leaf spring shackle we can't go back no further because it's it's right up against it we got um right now it's touching it we're gonna have to have clearance because that's gonna be a rattling factor so it does have to come out and we did take a quick measurement and the bed is wider than the tanks because that's kind of a thing i didn't want the tanks to be wider I didn't want the tanks to be wider than the bed, but the bed is wider than the tank, so we're good. Well, not only that, it could come out a little more because you got to step down. Yeah. And you can use this as a top step. True. You're going to have to have like little horse stirrups I hanging know. down, like a chain. Yeah, I am. All right, let's pull it down. We're going to go ahead and cut this and uh, get it fastened on there, kind of running out of light, and just kind of give you an update once we get it fastened on there. But you guys kind of see what we're doing. It is another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> but we are 
Making progress. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm nervous for this part because he's going to be cutting. I got but. a haircut. Oh, yeah. Look at that snazzy man. This morning. Ooh. Anyways, uh, we got the driver's side pretty much done. We got it taken off now. And now we're over here on the passenger side. We had to move the truck around so we can get the forklift over here because the fuel tank does have fuel in it. And we're trying to save our back. So we uh, drove the truck over here. Um, we'll kind of take you guys along on what we're doing as we go, of course. The kind of the plan on this one is flip this thing around real quick so okay. they can see. Well, here's our fuel tank, of course, and our sending unit and our uh, fuel supply and our return and vent is all up here. So kind of the game plan, so the fuel gauge continues to work. We're gonna take this tank off, of course, and then we're gonna cut this uh, unit out, this, this seven inch ring out, and then we're gonna graft it into the 1965 fuel tank so then everything works just like it would. We did kind of have an idea, we were gonna cut the original fuel tank and just kind of skin it over this one just to give it that look. But this tank is, um, maybe five gallons bigger than the other tank. So we're just gonna graft the top of this one in and we'll take you guys along with us when we do that. Mm -hmm. Hey, real quick, check out my shoes. So I'm too tight to go buy a new pair. Of, I bought new shoestrings, believe it or not, but I done rent them. Yeah. So I'm too tight to go buy a $60 pair of new shoes. I have boots too, but um, I'd, rather spend, I'd rather spend $500 on a farm truck than buy new shoes. <laughs> I mean, it's really the truth. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, whenever you go shopping, like, I don't, I don't like, I'm, I'm like you, like the other guys watching this, you go to Walmart or wherever to go buy something, you're like, oh, $15 for a pair of pants or $60 for shoes. And then you get on Marketplace and you see rusty uh, gold. And yeah. You're like, and you're like, dang, that's $1,500 <laughs> for a junk farm truck. I gotta have that. So you sacrifice. So in my reasoning is if I save money by not buying me a new pair of shoes that's $60 towards me a new farm truck <laughs> I mean it makes sense well, that's your man yeah, math yeah look at this one yeah I know grandma weed's gonna have it with you <laughs> that's hard to do one-handed Okay, that came out quicker than I thought. like a cute little water feature. Do you want to tell us what happened? Uh, well, my impact broke. I burned it up, so I'm using the torch to cut this step off. In the process of that, I burnt my shoestring in half on my good shoe, caught my pants on fire, Good job. My toe is on fire. Well, I bet. Because Sparkasaurus went in there. I know. You need you a good pair of boots. I have some. I probably just need to put them on. Yeah, probably so. Hold on. New boot goof in yeah. half. So Hannah said that I had to get my new boots out of the closet and wear them because I wore my other ones out and... Yeah, she's probably right. It's probably a little safer. These are still toed. But <laughs> anyways, without us talking about shoes. So what I got going on is these are the 1965 Ford 
gas tank lowers. We took the 95 internationals off and put the 65 ones on there. The problem I ran into is with these setting up against the frame, they hit this uh, leaf spring shackle. So what I did, I took some two by two angle iron that I had left over from the snap-on truck and welded them to the back of it. And then we're gonna weld it down the frame. But before we do that, we wanna make sure the fuel tank fits. And the reason I know where these go is because last night when you guys weren't around, I was kind of messing around with the other side and that side located this side. inches inch and three quarter let's just say two inches to be safe two, huh yeah to be safe so if we can get this thing grafted in on top right in its original hole we don't have to cut no more of the tank out so let's uh kind of the idea is we're going to cut this loose right here and weld it into the the top of the other one we're following the leader the leader well, it would be if, I think we have two inches once it's up in there. Well, how far back? That's all the way to the back of the circle. Yeah, and that, that would work. Worst case scenario, we can cut. I think I can make that work. Then we won't have to cut no more of this. Cut this out mm -hmm. and then just weld it back. And then our piece is gonna be. It's almost too bad you don't have a seven inch thing you can kind of sit down in there. That's right at two inches to the top. So or it's actually two and a quarter. So it would work if we use this hole, as long as you're okay with seeing. Well, my I mean, gosh, why would I not be okay? Well, I don't want to get fired. All right, so let's take it down. Let's cut the top of this tank out. Let's fill it with water one more time. It's probably good, but we're being safe today. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get both our tanks beside each other and let's just graft the, top, the tops into it. Put we the, got koi fish in this one too. So this should go like that. I think Corey did a great job. Um, we're You're ready. only saying that because I'm right here. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the tank. So real quick, International Ford. That's what we got. I went ahead and capped the old, the factory sending unit area, capped it off. Uh, we'll have to blow some paint on this thing, but it's ready to put back on there.
that clear. All right, so there you have it. It barely, barely cleared, but once it's up in there, it's good to go. We've got to go. So Hannah's got her famous Rice Krispie treats in here. I signed up the youth around um, the area. The churches are getting together, like the youth of the churches, and I'm having like a big just worship night. And I signed up to make Rice Krispies. I forgot it was Wednesday to be honest yeah. with you. And now I'm like, Corey, you gotta hurry up. This is the quickest I've ever made Rice Krispies. And we're running out of time is what we're doing. Yes, yeah. The sun's going down. We gotta get these Rice Krispies to the church. To the church, let's go. Has to do Trent's looking at me like, why is he? There he is. Rice Krispie mush right now. Wait. <laughs> Right, guys it is the next day and the plan of attack we got the fuel tank on the truck started up and we got it turned around in the driveway now we just got to try to get the bed set up against the body of the truck it's gonna be um it's gonna be a project let's go ahead and try to get this bed up getting the bed up is not really the problem the problem is now that the forklift is back here and the frame rails are gonna go past so we're gonna have to put the forklift to the side just to get it where it goes so i guess let's um let's go ahead and try to wiggle the frame rails of this truck underneath this bed down with the bed and then we realized hey wait a minute it's gonna hit something the something is a drive shaft the hitch hangs way low and it's going to hit this little cross member guy and it's what holds the drive shaft up so um they could have been somebody wanting to sell us a farm truck you think you think Haley's gonna want to sell me a farm truck mm, probably, probably not. not um but anyway so now this is Farewell to this beauty drive until we get a drive shaft made. So we've kind of got to figure out. I mean, if we take it out, we're going to have to push the truck forward and backwards. It's pretty much. Thing. Yeah, it's pretty much where it goes. It's real close. We can maybe. It might come forward a shade. We'll just have to figure it out. It's pretty close to where it goes. Though. Once we get once we get it where it goes, we can uh, mark center and we'll move the axle to the center mark. But we're getting there. It's getting closer. All right, so everything is unbolted. We got the airbags unbolted, this cross member. We got it unbolted up here. 40,000 bolts later, this thing is ready to move. 
the plan is we're going to rotate the the pinion here and as i rotate the pinion it should drive the wheels forward and hannah's in charge of the airbag and that cross member back there you ready for this no no why a long ways up there yeah it's like 30 miles to the front yeah it takes you a year to get around this frame right now yeah he was needing help i'm like hang on you've got to be patient give me time because it's there's still ways across it yeah so i guess let's uh let's get on it the thing i am dreading is drilling all these holes So we are regrouping. We are rethinking, um, keeping it all together because it wasn't really, that's going to take forever. So Corey's over here unhooking it. Well, the kind of my original plan was to keep that cross member and we could keep the air levelers on the frame rail bracket or whatever cross member. And I thought we'd just go all together. Then I was going to spin the pinion and make it drive the axle forward and that wasn't working so han suggested well maybe we just both of us push and that worked but we can't the cross member can't go with as it fast as, as fast as us because yeah. we're like lightning the queen mm -hmm. this has been a job i will say that but this will go a lot faster now because it was it was really taken off but um now that we're going to leave this cross member behind we can go we can replace it here in a bit all right, let's uh, let's go go at it again. And I know a lot of you in our last video said, "Hey, what's that?" Um, is that surprise. is a new project we were talking about. It is an upcoming something. So um, just keep just an eye out for ignore that. Ignore the camera yeah. for now. Yeah, just don't ask questions. Yes, it's here, but but you'll find out shortly and that's what we were like there's something you know an announcement we're gonna make no it is not that i'm pregnant yes that was a food baby um <laughs> but this is what we were going to announce but you all have seen it so here it is but that's going to be on another another something so another something, yeah mm -hmm. that'll help now I gotta do my side. All right, that was a lot easier. When it's you... starting to look. I can see it. Oh, um. I wonder, I, I'm curious how much we moved it forward, which whenever we uh, get the shocks on it or even kind of lo start locating everything, we can get you guys a measurement how much we bobbed it off. Well, the bed is almost hitting the truck, so. Yeah, well, the back of the bed needs to go towards the tractor. It's twisted on there, so we can yeah do that mm -hmm. now that we kind of got it where it goes we can go ahead and bob the back of the frame off get that out of our way and then man that thing is way shorter ain't it yeah it it's is. gonna turn a lot better this thing sucks to turn so now once we uh cut this off we'll go ahead and move well we can't cut it off yet why because the forklift's holding it up yeah, that's why i said we need the forklift up front yeah well it's not up front I know. <laughs> I wonder how tuna and eggs are. Turn towards me. Tuna and eggs. Has anyone had it? Tuna and eggs. <laughs> I'm trying to eat healthy, but I don't eat healthy. So I ain't cutting out bread.
Got her. You got one little tab, see it? Yep. Hey, uh, just be aware of Are the frame might. Now? I think you got Pretty it. Sure it's yeah, just be careful. Yeah, it's okay, well, you're good. Just be careful. I don't flip up and. We got a burnt Sam's Club sweater that my mother got Corey for Christmas. That um, is my shirt, ain't it? My jacket. <laughs> it How? was. Um, and then follow me this way. We've got this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Corey's face went. Uh, I was um, like, that's going to hurt. We did get this cut, and we think it's free, so we're going to try to wiggle it yeah. on the forklift. Hannah had a good idea. I was trying to figure out how to hold the remaining of the frame up, and she said, hey, why don't we take some uh, angle and weld it to the frame? I was thinking about jack stands and stuff, and we came up, or she came up with, hey, let's take some angle and weld it to the frame and make us some little stands. So that's what we got. So once, because the the wheels eventually will hold it up, of course, but right now everything's just kind of free, freely there. So we got our little forklift. It's got the re remain sections. We should uh, measure that real quick, see how long we cut, or we can measure that later. But so there we go. We're uh, one step closer. And how we figured out where we were going to cut it, we simply measured from the front of the bed up underneath, from the front of the bed right here to the back here. That is nine feet. So what I did was I made us a line at uh, nine feet, which is like right here. We came two inches forward. So it'll give us plenty of clearance. We don't have to uh, cut the bed right once. Now, bed twice, um, my bed. The bed is too close to the cab. I mean, if we bring that bed down right now, it's hitting. Yeah. So we do know that it needs to go back, which is why we got the measurements we did. We really cut the, the frame probably too short, but it's fine. I didn't want to cut it twice. And if it's too short, it's only by a few inches, two inches, maybe. So, all right, I guess let's, um, once we get the bed where it goes, then we can really locate the, the axle, but we can't look, we can't put the bed down because the frame's in the way. If we put the, fr if we put the bed down, the bed would just simply rest on top of the frame. So that's why we did what we did. Mm -hmm. You ready? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Me and Hannah Duck here didn't really think about our uh, welding the angle iron in there. We weld that piece of angle in there, and it won't. <laughs> we can't let the bed down because we just weld that in there. So I guess we're going to cut that angle out and just hope the frame rails don't sway out. If they do, then we'll just have to pull them back together. I think it'll be fine. So I guess we're just going to cut this weld off here. And this weld off here, take the center section out, get it setting in there. And then um, we can always pull it back together with a cross member. What's really going to suck and I'm dreading is the stupid drill in the holes. All right, well, let's, uh, let's cut that out. It's finally time to put the bed down. And if you guys all know, I'm horrible at operating the backhoe. All the valves are like extremely sticky on it. And... It just, it's all or nothing, I feel like, so. Anytime he's running the backhoe, he's like, no, watch out, no, look out. Yeah. So, um, and I know that's when he's worried because, yeah. 
he usually doesn't care if I'm in the way. Because he can usually control okay. whatever he... Okay, I want to say, that makes me sound like I don't care about you. No, when you're on that thing, like if you're on the forklift, you're never like, oh, look out, case things go south. I got the forklift but down that pat. Thing yeah, that thing like, is a little sketchy. Like I said, this bucket just needs to come that way. And obviously, I can't like, bring it this way. I have to swing it. Yeah, but I think the more you swing it, it's going to go it that will, way, yeah. so it's going to turn it anyway. Okay, just remember, I can't. If you're I remember, there, I can't see it. Just remember, if you ruin this cab, you're going to upset me and all of the Mitzlers. So. <laughs> Put the pressure on me. Yeah. Maybe we'd be able to get the forklift over here and push that, it over. That'd be fine. If I had our old forklift with the side shift, it'd been really nice right now. Okay, so we kind of got it, but kind of don't. We got to clean up real quick. Somehow we got to get the tractor out of there. Once we leave the tractor, could we block the bed up? I don't. Here? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, we're getting there. Now we need another gantry. We need an overhead crane the whole property.
I like that. Big time, but it needs more. It's straight now. The whole thing is there now. Is yeah, it straight now, you think? It's straight, yeah. But I'm afraid these socks ain't big enough. That's I'm thinking the strap it. might be. I think we need a strap and help it pull itself. So now let's take two ratchet straps and ratchet it forward. This is it. I mean, obviously there's still a lot of work to do, but we did get the bed on, the axle kind of pretty much located where it needs to be. Um, we'll show you what we got going on. All right. Well, the axle is located, but that's still, as you can see by all the airlines, there's still a lot to do. And we got to uh, bolt the axle into place, but it is located and it looks good. It looks I do think there's um, like a two or three inch C channel in there underneath the bed. And um, we're going to take it out and lower the bed about three inches. So it should be right above the tire. Um, I hope it doesn't hit because then we'll have to weld them things back in there. I think it'll be fine since it's an air ride truck. It'll, it has uh, levelers on it so it can never go down too low. And if it does, we can always pop the bed off. It's not like we're going to weld it on there. But it would look good. Another three inches, you know, be about level with and, the bottom of that. Yeah, and if you go on the other side, oh, real quick. So there is a bucket under this step. <laughs> uh, I have to finish the front of it. So my plan is, as you can see, like the little tank holder here. Well, the battery tray ends here. So I'm going to take a section of the other uh, fuel tank strap and graft it to the bottom of the battery tray. So then it'll... It'll look right, but for this, we wanted to show you guys kind of the battery cover um, is 80% complete. If we go to the other side, um, Robert cut the the side skirt or something out. So we can show you over here that it wants to go down another three inches and look all right. All right, so if you see this side skirt right here, he uh, had that cut out, I guess, for the fuel tank or something. We're not sure, but we can come down another three inches and kind of get rid of that. But it looks good. We are coming along. Kind of the next step for this thing is, um, for you guys anyways, is like accessorizing the bed and pretty much going to Florida. We're and pretty, interior. Yeah. I mean, we've got to get Corey's seat figured out. Yeah, there's so. still a couple more videos left, but the majority of it's done. It's crazy. How many yeah. videos? Three, four? Uh, three or four, Maybe. yeah. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. But, so that's that. It looks really good. Uh, yesterday, Hannah was saying... Uh, I don't know why the wheels aren't as wide as the front bumper. I figured no, they would have. I didn't or... know why the bumper wasn't as wide as okay. the wheels. I said, it's just hard to believe that, you know, the bumper is that rusty and the wheels ain't. I said, normally the wheels will rust out first. And I kind of thought for a second, I'm like, uh, I had to really think about what she said because I'm thinking we put a different chassis yeah, under well, corn dog to me it's the same thing. <laughs> it looks really good. I feel like we executed this project really good. Um, is a pretty much a perfect fit and per, a perfect candidate. Yeah. You'll be able to turn it now. Yeah. So I don't know if we told you, but we took 18 foot out of the frame. Yeah. Um, there's a lot back there. So I'm excited. It's just a, a big truck. Well, I guess you'll be seeing this thing in Daytona. Hopefully we still got a, Lord willing. Yeah. We got a few things to finish up. And then after that, I got to get on the van. I've been working on the van, but my next deadline is to get that Grumman van in the, the shop done. And I'm going to be cruising that thing at the Pigeon Forge Rod Run. Oh, yeah? So you'll see me, Hannah, be cruising this fat daddy, fat girl, whatever. Yeah, don't get in my way because I can't see you anyways. <laughs> I'm going to need a camera for the front. Well, let's do an outro for these people and I guess go from there. All right, guys, it's going to be the end of this video. <laughs> the welder rig is kind of coming to the end. There's not much left to do on this thing. The kind of the next step for us is to locate the suspension 100%, get a measurement to the dry shaft guy. Hopefully, maybe we can use one of the dry shafts we have. I'll keep you guys updated on what we decide on that, of course, but. I don't know, it looks so cool. Um, when I seen it at um, Silas's, I, I knew, I mean, it like love the Viking, at first sight for it, Hannah. it was. And the Viking, you know, is very custom. We made the bed. This one, it kind of looks like it did when we got it. And that's what I want because this thing is so cool. Um, it's just, how do you, how do you yeah, take you away from that? Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to see it back together. And I cannot wait 
to be driving this thing to work. Linda, I'm coming to pick you up. It looks like the same truck that we started with, of course, but it just looks like it's on steroids now. I mean, this thing is <laughs> a tank. Yeah, man. Yeah, I th it's so cool. I've been thinking, he said, what are you going to name this one? I said, I don't know. And then I thought about maybe Dorothy because she ain't in Kansas anymore. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just like calling it the welder rig just because yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Makes um, me sound professional. Yeah, so I guess we're going to hop off here and we'll see you guys next Wednesday at 6. Just a couple dorks having fun. We really enjoy this stuff. We enjoy taking you guys along. Uh, I feel like in the I haven't watched this video yet and put it together, but there at the end, we were just kind of everything's big and heavy and moving around so and we don't have much room in the driveway i mean we're doing all of this right here in the driveway we 100 percent built this truck in the driveway yeah but um god has blessed us with the most amazing weather he knows that we don't like cold so he made it like 70s this week and it's been so fantastic we do appreciate each and every comment in each and every one of you watching um we love to read the comments so those of you who comment nice things and Tell us about your builds and where you're from. We love that. Um, we do appreciate everyone, and we will... See what? you guys on the next one. Yep, so don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>